What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Today, it's episode 15 for the U.S. Grand Prix. Last time out, it was the Japanese Grand Prix and a race that really didn't go our way. It was a uh, disappointment, I guess you could say, but if you're disappointed with an 11th place finish, things can't be too bad. If you missed that episode, go back and give it a watch. I'll put a link to that in the top right-hand corner of your screen. I'm suspecting that we may be in a downturn as other teams out upgrade us because they have better facilities and we're capped at a spec one and can only go so far there's five races left in this season we have our home grand prix up next really want to perform well for the home crowd we've got a lot of stuff due in before this race you see it up above me a lot of things that we're supposed to get in upgrades events all kinds of stuff so if everything goes well we might be taking a pretty good piece to coda a track that i like but I don't know if our car is going to be well suited for. We have one hell of a points battle going on after Valtteri Bottas goes to victory lane in Japan. Hamilton DNF'd, and now his points lead is a mere 20 points. Verstappen, Norris, Ricardo, Perez all tightly bunched together, third through sixth. And then you got Alonso, Leclerc, Vettel, Sonoda, Gasly. We're 12th, four points ahead of Sainz, Stroll, Ocon, and Jack's got his one point. Even more interestingly, on the constructor side, a new team in second, McLaren, by way of a double podium at Suzuka, overtakes Red Bull, now has seven points over them. AlphaTauri leads Ferrari by five points for fourth, and then Aston Martin and Alpine are tied for sixth. Incredible stuff going on. The constructor standings are really tightly bunched together. It's fun to see that. And we're hanging out in eighth with 45 points. Alfa Romeo, Haas, Williams still with zeros next to their names. Looking at the performance index uh, after Suzuka, we dropped down a spot underneath Aston Martin, but we've got a ton of stuff in the works. You saw a lot of that's due in before this race but we are falling a little bit behind. If everything comes in, maybe we overtake Aston Martin, maybe we overtake Ferrari. It's uh, There's a lot of stuff in the pipeline, but for now, we're falling down the pecking order just a little bit when it comes to performance. As far as the upgrades that we have in the pipeline, we got a major powertrain, a minor powertrain, a major chassis, two minor aerodynamics and two minor durabilities. We got upgrades across the board, every department right now, working overtime, trying to make this car better. It, uh, we're gonna have to find something and we might be bumping up against our ceiling as far as performance goes. It's year one, you never really know with these things. It's been a fun ride so far, but we're not done trying to make this car as strong as we can to finish strong here in season one. Well, I had a little bit of money burning a hole in my pocket as well, almost $3 million. I decided to chuck a million and a half into the marketing department to make that a spec one. Went with the activities management upgrade. That'll boost the benefit that we get from the activities that we do. That way, we're going to be spec one across the board. So come the off season, if Jack doesn't re-sign with us, we're going to be a little more appealing because some of these drivers want spec one in certain things. If we're spec one across the board and everything, I think that casts a wider net and we might be okay. So that'll come in before this race as well. And we'll be spec one for all of our facilities. Let's get it rolling. And let's hope that most of this stuff comes in. Half of this stuff comes in. I don't know. Let's see. Here we go. I got our event. ECU upgrade came through. Got our marketing department. We've got our chassis upgrade. Powertrain upgrade failed. Well, two out of three ain't bad. Nothing like your hometown race to put a smile on your face. Hopefully we're still smiling by the end of this thing. Let's head out to Circuit of the Americas and see how we do. When I jumped into this weekend, I didn't think we'd be getting a message quite like this. From Ethan regarding next year's regulations, there's a proposed amendment to the technical regulations that would see changes to the internal combustion engine, the hybrid system components, and their packaging within the car. So there's a good chance that there's gonna be a change to the engine for next year. That's our best attribute on this car is the engine and there's going to be a probably a change to that and we're going to lose all the upgrades or we're going to have to try and protect the upgrades that we've made 
That is a big yikes. That that could be a big blow to our race team. Because again, that's that's our biggest strength is our engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing like bad news to start off a weekend. Thanks, Ethan. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. That's debatable. Lance Stroll seems like a good option here out of all the... Well, it's definitely not going to be the McLaren guys. They got the second best car. Verstappen and Red Bull. Uh, no, we'll go with we'll go with Lance Stroll. I guess that's our new rival. I didn't think my rivalry was over with Leclerc, though. Okay, Lance Stroll. How did it feel to be racing on home turf? Well, we haven't raced yet, Claire. We've just done practice and qualifying. So, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Fantastic! Track has the best fans. You won't be starting at the front of the pack. Are you worried? No, because I didn't expect to be starting at the front of the pack. Hey. Did you feel that things went well for you today? No. No, I don't. Uh, do Do you? If you were in my situation, do you, would you feel that things went well today? We are slow. I mean, we're not the slowest, but we are slow. But we're going to keep a positive attitude. The stars aligned today and everything went my way. Great. Well, that's everything. Welcome once again, then, to the United States Grand Prix here in the magnificent city of Austin. It was here in 2018 that Kimi Raikkonen delighted the world by winning for the first time in 114 races. There's always a record to be broken, so what, I wonder, is in store for us today? It's the Circuit of the Americas, then, situated 14 miles outside the great city of Austin. This is a 3.6-mile lap with 20 corners, 10 each to the left and to the right, and top speeds of around 200 miles per hour. Overtaking opportunities are available into turns 1 and 12, especially with that rear wing DRS wide open. It's just about time to go to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tires, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tires. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, with Daniel Ricciardo slotting in alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Lance Stroll, and Vettel, Hamilton, Ocon, Fernando Alonso, they've taken a grid penalty, and Yuki Tsunoda, Norris, Joker, Jack Aitken, and Sainz. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Mick Schumacher, Verstappen, Kimi Raikkonen, and Pierre Gasly. They've taken a grid penalty. Mazepin, Russell, Latifi, and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Okay, Jeff, will do. Welcome to the grid here at Circuit of the Americas. As you saw in the grid rundown, a number of grid penalties for a lot of the front-running teams, including Lewis Hamilton. We'll put him a little bit further behind. Remember, 20 points is the gap between him and his teammate for the championship. That moves Ricardo up to the outside of the front row. That moved me and Jack up about four spots, I think, or three spots, four spots, something like that. So we're P12 and P13 after being the two slowest cars in Q2 by a pretty fair margin. Whatever we had that wasn't working at Suzuka, we brought back to Circuit of the Americas like twofold. This car sucks. Like, it is bad. In Sector 1, it is just awful. Absolutely awful. I cannot carry any speed through the S's. It just does not want to change directions. It is it is rough to drive this thing around this track. We had a terrible, terrible practice session. I didn't get any resource points. Maybe a few hundred. 
Uh, I couldn't complete any of the practice programs. It was bad. This this might be our home track and our home race. It has been a nightmare weekend so far. As far as our strategy for this race, it's a 28-lap race. It's going to be a two-stopper for us. We're going to start on softs because literally everybody in the field is starting on softs except for Sebastian Vettel, who's like in eighth or something, and he's starting on hards. So he's going to be in really big trouble, I think. But everyone else is on softs, so we're going to start softs. We'll switch over to mediums, and then we'll go back to softs at the end of the race. I, I don't know about all this, but it's what we're going to do. Our home race. Hopefully we have some good luck today. We're going to need it. Hey, uh, all right, all right. I think we're three wide. Oh, we are three wide. Oh, yeah, that was Vettel with those hard tires. How'd that work out for you? Not very good. <laughs> yeah, Vettel is struggling on the hards. It actually helps us out to have them behind us. All right. Well, we're up to 10th. Vettel behind us on those hards. Hopefully he can play a little defense for us and keep those guys at bay. We're going to need all the breathing room we can get. Well, that's one lap in the books. Okay. That's a good start. Let's hold on to it. DRS for the first time. We've got Norris behind us. It's only a matter of time until he passes us. Those McLarens are so fast, but we're hanging in there. It's a little scary in sector one, but the car's pretty good in sector two. The strength of our car, straight line speed. How about that? They're battling in front of us. Is that an Aston Martin and an Alpine battling? That's got to be Stroll, because we know we already got Vettel on his hard tires. That's our rival Stroll up there with two Alpines between us. This car does not turn through this right-hander at all. It just plows. But it's so good in a straight line, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we're blocking? All right. Take it around the outside. See you, Ocon. Thanks. I can't believe we're in eighth right now. I really can't. I'm pretty impressed with our car. It's a lot better than it was in practice. I made a few changes to the setup. So far, it seems to be helping. We got Alonzo here, maybe. Nah. Nope, not this time. Oh boy, these soft tires are wearing out fast. I'm driving the hell out of them. Front tires are dying. Hopefully the mediums have a little bit better life to them. That is a tricky pit road to get onto, my goodness. <laughs> All right, well, not a bad first stint. I am I am genuinely pleased with that first stint. That went a lot better than I, I thought we were gonna drop like a rock. Come on, boys. 1.8, holy shit. What a stop, okay. Only one stop to go, one stop left in this strategy. Ooh. All righty. Well, here we go. We came out in front of Verstappen and Norris. It's kind of a good thing, I would say. I don't know if we'll stay there.
Here's the interesting part. Where do we all rejoin? Oh my god, what a mess. Oh, con- Oh! Oh! Huge contact between Alonzo and Verstappen. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, that was messy. That was a big hit between the two of them. Alonzo came out on the hards. Wow, he's going to the end. One stop strategy for Alonzo? Huh. What is going on here? Verstappen, you better get aggressive and start passing these guys. I'll do it myself. Clear. Ocon and Stroll in front of us are on hards as well. Verstappen's on soft, so he's doing a two-stop. I think these guys in front of us are gonna go to the end. On hards, right? Wow, strategies of plenty here at Circuit of the Americas. I like it. We got to catch these guys and go. Uh-oh. Nikita Mazepin's out of the session. Oh, well. No big loss there. Who's this? Yuki. Oh! More contact between Yuki and Stroll. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, Max, fuck off. Well, that didn't work out at all for us. Not one damn bit. That went terribly. Oh, they're fighting. They're fighting. Yuki gets it done. Uh, same move I put on Alonzo. It's a good place to pass him. Great maneuver. You made it look easy. Thanks. Hey, Yuki. Bye, Yuki. We need to catch Okan, who's on hard tires. I think we can catch him. We got Yuki in our DRS, which is fine. This is playing out pretty well so far. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the softs. Okie dokie. I am fascinated to see how this strategy plays out. There's a lot of people who are not pitting a second time. Yeah, I know. I don't have any grip left. I ran all the goody off of these mediums. Doing the best I can, Jeff. We want to pit this lap, so push now. Battles on pit road. He's on the same strategy as us. Even though he started on the hards. Jack is in the pit. Jack in the pit. Yep, we'll be there next time. Bye, pal. Here we come. Well, that was not a very fun end to that stint. Those things were dead. We'll switch over to the softs and run it to the end. Come on, baby. Give me one more amazing pit stop, boys. Come on. 2-1. Not bad. Not bad. All right. All right. Pit strategy complete. See these tires through to the end now. Came out 15th. Time to drive like blazes. Caution. 
For what? Someone's come off ahead of you. There's a yellow flag ahead. Oh. Oh. That was Yuki. Okay, clear. Tough. Tough scenes for Yuki. A free spot for me. Come on, Max. Oh, we're doing this. We're doing this. Mmm. Good enough. That's a two for one, baby. Come on. We're going to have five to go at the line. Norris is two seconds up the road. Signs is six seconds up the road on hards. Ugh, I don't know. I'm not sure we're going to get back to the points. We might be scrapping here with Verstappen for 12th. That might be as good as it gets for us. We're going to set him up here for the last lap. Make sure we finish in front of him. Coming to the white flag here in the U.S. Grand Prix has been a fascinating event, to say the least. But it's not going to be points today for us, unfortunately. We'll have one hell of a battle with Max here to the end. Which is fine. We're battling Red Bull cars. But he's out of position anyways. Oh, well, at least it'll look cool. Botas gets the win again. Here we come on Max. Ooh. Well, good battle, Max. P12 in the U.S. Grand Prix. Ah, uh, what a race. Bye, Max. He's mad. <laughs> Gasly, driver of the day. Cool. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. Ricardo and Charles, the rest of the podium. Wow, good race for Charles. Where is Hamilton? Hamilton falling apart at the end of the season. Major championship implications again. Botas catching fire. Final results of the U.S. Grand Prix. Valtteri Botas gets another convincing win by 12, almost 13 seconds over Daniel Ricciardo. Leclerc in third, pretty close between them. Hamilton, a very close fourth. And then it was Sergio Perez, Ocon, Vettel, Stroll, Gasly, Carlos Sainz. In 10th, Vettel got that fastest lap. Remember, he started on the hard tire. One stopped it. Apparently, the one stop was the way to go because that was everybody in the points one stopped. Lando in 11th. We get 12th. Max right behind us. All two stops. Alonzo, Sonoda, who blew up towards the end, it looked like. Jack finishes 16th. Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Raikkonen, Russell Latifi, and Mazepin, the lone DNF. So that was an exciting race from our perspective. Let's have yours. Well, at least it was from your perspective. Does the pressure get to you when you're back home? No. Uh, the pressure pushes you to try harder. Home fans are the best. We all underestimated you, didn't we? I don't know. Did you? <laughs> what did you expect from me today, Claire? If you tell me that, then I can tell you if you overestimated me or underestimated me. Why do you even estimate me? Let's talk about that. Uh, there's a great points battle to focus on. Why are you even thinking about me? <sighs> you underestimated the team. When we're in sync, great things can happen. You left some body work out there on the track. Were you struggling for grip? No. No, I wasn't. It's called racing. Shit happens. Nothing that won't buff out. Great. Well, that's everything. Cool. Personnel departments requested your attendance at today's meeting. All right. What's up, personnel department?
It looks like our driver has an issue. We need you to step in here. Okay, we've been running through Jack Aiken's sim data, and they appear to be cutting it fine when it comes to their fuel load. We don't want this to occur. They appear to be cutting it fine. We don't want this to occur in an actual race. Okay, so I guess cutting it fine means cutting it close? When I hear cutting it fine means it's fine. There's no problem, but I guess in this context, it means they're cutting it close. So um, either we talk to him to increase his awareness, but drop his racecraft, or we don't talk to him and drop his awareness and improve his racecraft. Ignore it. You know what? It's new strategy, Jack. Go, go get him with the fuel strat. Yeah. Okay. I got to say the US Grand Prix actually surpassed my expectations based off of what I thought we were going to do from practice because in practice we were garbage. We were really bad and in qualifying we weren't even that good, but we raced a lot better. So the setup changes, they were slight, but they helped a lot. Tire wear wasn't all that good, but we were competitive. We didn't finish in the points, but we ran further up the order than I thought. We battled with Max again. It was kind of like our battle at Monza. So that was cool, but ultimately no points. And this car still has a lot of weaknesses. And going into the Mexican Grand Prix next time out could expose these weaknesses even more. It looks like we have... Is that three upgrades on the way? Four upgrades on the way? Oh, baby. I like the looks of that. Let's see these point standings. This is getting good. After the U.S. Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton's point lead is now seven. It was 20. Now it is seven. This is going to be a brawl to the end. Ricardo holds down third by 10 over Verstappen, who has fourth by four over Norris, who has fifth by five over Perez. Unbelievable points battle. Charles is seventh, Fernando Alonso, Vettel and Yuki Tsunoda holds down 10th over Gasly, his teammate, by two points. I've still got 12th by three points over Signs. Stroll, Ocon, and Jack in 16th with one point. Now, on the constructor's side, McLaren still holds on to second. Stretch that lead out a little bit over Red Bull. Ferrari holds on to fourth now over Alpha Tauri, Aston Martin, Alpine, all very, very close. And we're still eighth with our 45 points. This is, this is a great battle. Imagine if this is how it was in real life. We'd all be losing our damn minds, but man, this is good. Seven points from Hamilton to Botas. Woo. Well, we'll leave it there for today. The US Grand Prix was, eh, it could have been better. It could have been worse. We'll see how we do. We got some upgrades in the works. The season's coming to an end. Great points battle out there as well. A lot of cool storylines, and we're just chugging along, trying to get there without falling apart at the seams. We'll see how we do next time out. But if you enjoyed today's episode, let me know. Leave a thumbs up on the video and a comment down below. Give me your thoughts on the U.S. Grand Prix and what you think we'll see in the next episode. Oh, boy. We... <laughs> we might be limping across the line, but damn it, we're going to get there. I appreciate you watching today's video. Again, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time out for the Mexican Grand Prix.